Hello, I'm Holly and today I'm going to be guessing the plots of books solely based on their cover. I'm sure that other people have done this idea but the first time that I saw something like this was on Kat's channel at Brews and Reviews. I really love her channel, I definitely recommend going to check them out. And I saw something similar, basically this idea, where someone gave her a selection of book covers and she had to guess the plots on them. And I don't know how entertaining this is going to be to watch, but I think it's going to be fun for me to do. So I have gone on the internet. I've got my laptop here, which I'm going to be looking at throughout this. So I hope you don't mind me looking down, but I have found 10 book covers. I don't know how many will do in this video. If it becomes too long, I might cut it into two or just do half of them or whatever but I have found 10 book covers I know nothing about and I got them from a variety of different lists so on Goodreads like books you're meant to read in your life or 10 books to get you out of a reading slump lots of different places but I know nothing about these books and I'm going to guess the plots based on their cover I think we should just get into it hopefully it will make sense once I show you the covers and I'm guessing but yeah Let's just get into it. The first cover that I've picked I think is somewhat easy. So it's called Dragon Dawn, book one of the Dinosaurian time travel series by Deborah O'Neill Cords or Cordes. And I'm gonna guess that this is a fantasy because this woman looks like she's maybe part dragon or part dinosaur and it says that it's book one of the dinosaurian time travel series so i'm going to guess that this follows a group of people who go through a portal into the past where there was dinosaurs and then they get infected with some kind of disease that gives them that like makes them half dinosaur or gives them some kind of, I mean it says Dragon Dawn, are they half dragon? No, I'm gonna say they're half dinosaur, or like they get, di they become part dinosaur, does that make sense? So fantasy, group of people, I mean it could be science fiction couldn't it? Mm, I don't know but there's dragons, let's say fantasy, group of people accidentally get sent back in time and they become infected with something that makes them become part dinosaur. Okay then, let's have a look on Goodreads. So it's been shelved in science fiction and fantasy. It only has 202 ratings. Time snakes between alternative universes. Ever watchful, an alien intelligence survives on Mars waiting to be found by spacefarers from Earth. The alien's ultimate goal is to send human astronauts back in time where they will alter the past and thwart the extinction of the dinosaurs. A race of intelligent dinosaurs resembling the alien's extinct species subsequently evolves to rule the world. But a human female astronaut through a strange twist of fate survives the change in the space-time continuum after finding herself in a dinosaurian body, she must race against time and the formidable alien to restore the universe to its rightful course. So I didn't get it right, did I? I didn't get it right at all. It is a science fiction where aliens are trying to send astronauts back in time to stop the extinction of the dinosaurs. I didn't get that, did I? No. But she does become part dinosaurian. Yeah. I didn't really get that one, did I? The next book cover I have is this one, and this is Scars by J. Ishiro Finney. Again, I'm very sorry if I pronounce any of these names wrong. Obviously, I have no clue what these are about. And from this, I'm guessing that this is a science fiction. It's got an astronaut's helmet and a rat. And the tagline is heroes come in all sizes. So I'm thinking the rat has significance. I'm going to guess this follows a group of astronauts on a spaceship or some kind of space vessel and they've taken rats with them to do like science experiments and stuff to see how rats can cope in space and then maybe they get infiltrated by some evil alien and the rats somehow help them to win. All the rats are evil. Now I'm gonna say that the rats were taken by the scientists or the astronauts or whatever to a space shuttle or something. Aliens come in, try and kill them, and the rat 
maybe has some kind of toxin in it that can kill aliens. So if it bites an alien, the alien will die. Let's have a look. I don't think I got any of that right. James was a high rider, a thrill seeker, an EVA cowboy. I don't know what that is. He was one of a small brotherhood of men who made a living out of lassoing dead satellites and towing them out of Earth's orbit. Then came the accident, the one which cost James everything. Now landlocked and grounded with no chance of returning to space, James lives a life of quiet desperation. By day, he struggles with having become an amputee. By night, he is haunted by nightmares of the moment that took his leg, his friends and his entire career. After a failed suicide attempt, a company psychologist assigns James a companion animal named Max, a very smart rat with an interesting past. Now, once again, James will find his life radically changed as old wounds are opened and fresh scars are forced to heal. Again, I didn't guess it right, did I? That seems a lot darker than I was thinking. But you know what, that actually sounds interesting. I do love animal companions and animals in books. So you know what, I might even try and read that. It says it's only 49 pages on Kindle. I might read that, that sounds interesting. And then the next book that we have is called The Crying Book by Heather Crystal. I picked this one because I really like this cover. There's just something that speaks to me about this cover. And interestingly, it does have that galaxy in the tears, which means it could have science fiction elements or has it just been included to make it look pretty? I don't know. Initially, the name The Crying Book makes me think that it's going to be some kind of contemporary, but because of that galaxy, it's throwing me off. What could this be about? Is it like a dystopian? I am going to guess that this is a science fiction set in the future and people aren't allowed to cry and the only way that you can get your emotions out is if you go to the crying book and like you write all your sad feelings out so kind of everyone's happy and then they just go to the crying book maybe like once a year writing all their sad memories have a bit of a cry and then they're fine again i don't know could just be a contemporary couldn't it let's have a look 1302 ratings oh it is poetry award-winning poet heather crystal has just lost a dear friend to suicide and must reckon with her own struggles with depression and the birth of her first child how she faces her joy grief anxiety impending motherhood and conflicted truce with the world results in a moving meditation on the nature rapture and perils of crying from the history of tear-catching gadgets including the woman who designed a gun that shoots tears to the science behind animal tears including moths who drink them to the draft role of white women's tears in racist violence told in short poetic snippets the crying book delights and surprises as well as rigorously examines how mental illness can affect a family across generations and how crying can express women's agency or lack of agency in everyday life. So I didn't get it right, did I? But that again sounds incredibly interesting. Poetry is not usually my thing, but that sounds like it's not just poetry as you would normally have, more discussions, essays and poetic snippets. Again, that sounds really interesting. I cry a lot, so I'd love to learn more about crying and the history of crying. And then book cover number four. I don't know if I'm going to do 10 because this video could end up being really long and boring. But book cover number four is Dealing in Dreams by Lillian Rivera. Now, again, I picked this cover because it's stunning. And I don't even know what I could guess about this. There's some kind of parrot on the front. There's a lot of flowers person on the front has a telescope that makes me think that maybe it's no maybe a contemporary of someone who wants to be like an astronaut or some kind of scientist to do with space I and mean, it says dealing in dreams do you think it's people dreaming about things why is there a bird maybe there are these plants that you can take and they make people have really vivid dreams and it's someone who like grows these plants that make people live their dreams if that makes sense if it is that sounds really interesting young adult science fiction okay let's have a little look 
Nala leads the fiercest all-girl crew in Mega City. That role brings with it violent throwdowns and access to the hottest bodega clubs, but the 16-year-old grows weary of the life. Her dream is to get off the streets and make a home in the exclusive Mega Towers in which only a chosen few get to live. To make it to the Mega Towers, Nala must prove her loyalty to the city's benevolent founder and cross the border in a search for a mysterious gang, the Asher Riders. Led by a reluctant guide, Nala battles other crews and her own doubts, but the closer she gets to her goal, the more she loses sight of everything and everyone she cares about. Nala must do the unspeakable to get what she wants, a place to call home. But is a home just where you live, or who you choose to protect? Again, I got it really wrong. Some people have categorised it as queer, which it piques my interest. Again, like I've heard no one talk about this, but that sounds really cool. Like I love stuff to do with gangs, but I still got it wrong, didn't I? I got it wrong. Maybe we're just finding new books to read. Then the next one I picked because I don't know what this image is. And this is The Library of Small Catastrophes by Alison C. Rollins. Now look at that and tell me what you think the hell that is. It's some kind of person looking creature that is covered in buttons and has an abacus for a face. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't really get much from that. And even the Library of Small Catastrophes, like that title, doesn't mean anything to me. I'm going to guess that this is an adult literary fiction. Maybe it follows someone who has a compulsive need to count things, or like a hoarder. I don't know, maybe they hoard buttons, I don't know. I can't guess this. Can you guess? Have you heard of this book before? Poetry. Why have I picked so much poetry? I didn't even know. Library of Small Catastrophes, Alison Rollins' ambitious debut collection, interrogates the body and nation as storehouses of countless tragedies. Drawing from George Louis Borges' fascination with the library, Rollin uses the concept of the archive to offer a lyric history of the ways in which we process loss. Memory is about the future, not the past, she writes, and rather than shying away from the anger, anxiety and mourning of her narrators, Rollins' poetry seeks to challenge the status quo, engaging in a diverse, boundary-defying dialogue with an ever-present reminder of the ways race, sexuality, spirituality, violence and American culture collide. Interesting. Another poetry collection, it seems, which might make sense why the picture is a bit strange. I feel like poetry collections can pretty much have anything on the front. Again, an interesting book that not many people seem to have read. Maybe another one that I could pick up. I think this is my favourite cover that I found. And the next one is All of Us With Wings by Michelle Rui Kiel. I don't know anything about this. And uh, this has been blurbed by Anna Marie McLemore. So I'm guessing that this has maybe fabulous elements. I know that that author tends to write young adult books with these kind of fabulous themes or concepts in them. And this seems to have some strange things on the front. So you have some birds, you've got some stingrays, you've got, is that a bridge from New York? You've got trees, you've got some kind of card in her hair, some fish. It's a bit difficult to know, all of us with wings. I'm going to guess this follows a girl who works with sea creatures or maybe it's some kind of like sea world or zoo or something like that. Let's just say she has wings and this is like a young adult contemporary with some magical elements because she has wings. Fantasy, young adult, LGBT, magical realism. 17 year old, I can't pronounce this, Zochi is alone in San Francisco, running from her painful past. The mother who abandoned her, the man who betrayed her. Then one day she meets Pallas, a precocious 12 year old who lives with her rock star family in one of the city's storybook Victorians. Zochi accepts a position as Pallas's live in governess and quickly finds her place in their household, which is relaxed and happy despite the band's larger than life fame. But on the night of the vernal equinox, as a concert after party rages in the house below, 
Zochi and Pallas accidentally summon a pair of ancient creatures devoted to avenging the wrongs of Zochi's adolescence. She would do anything to preserve her new life, but with the creatures determined to exact revenge on those who've hurt her, no one is safe. Not the family she's chosen, nor the one she left behind. These books sound incredible. I need to read these books. Maybe I should do a reading vlog reading these books because that just sounds great and it's only been rated 513 times. I love that. But again, I didn't get it right, did I? I'm not good at this. All I've learned in this is that book covers really don't tell you what books are about, do they? And then I think I might just do one more. I think this video is getting a bit longer than I thought it would. And the last one that I will do is The Owls Have Come To Take Us Away by Ronald L. Smith. Now, this looks like a middle grade to me. I don't know what it is about this. Is that like a young boy? And the kind of creepy woods, it seems a bit like magical, like a boy going into the woods, going missing, or going on some journey in the woods, meeting magical people, magical creatures. There's an owl. Is that something to do with witches? Wizards? I don't know. Let's have a look. Middle grade! I got something right! 12 year old Simon is obsessed with aliens, the ones who take people and do experiments. When he's too worried about them to sleep, he listens to the owls hoot outside, owls that have the same eyes as aliens, dark and foreboding. Then something strange happens on a camping trip, and Simon begins to suspect he's been abducted. But is it real, or just the overactive imagination of a child who loves fantasy and role-playing games, and is the target of bullies and his father's scorn? Even readers who don't believe in UFOs will relate to the universal kid feeling of not being taken seriously by adults that deepens this deliciously scary tale. Interesting. Alien abduction. I didn't get it right. I didn't get any of these right. But this has been fun and I found quite a few books that sound incredibly interesting. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books or what your thoughts are on them. Are you interested in picking them up now that you've heard their blurbs? But that's it for today's video. I hope that you've enjoyed this a bit. If you did enjoy it, let me know. I could always do another one in the future. I hope you enjoyed and to everyone out there, stay curious. Bye!